there's a number of things. Like if you're thinking about selling your business, if you're thinking about setting your business up to sell, there's a lot of things that you need to be thinking about now in terms of, you know, what potential buyers look at when considering the value of your business. And by no means is this going to be an exhaustive list. Alrighty, alrighty. Welcome to another episode of the Ignite podcast. My name is Josh Stone. I am the founder of Ignite Coaching. I'm actually a civil engineer, still practicing engineer, CPN, JPEQ. No, I will not sign any drawings for you. Most of my journey was being part of a number of different consultancies. One in particular grew to 40 million in revenue per year. And when I sold out of that business, I realized that I, I wanted to focus my effort and attention on helping other business owners do the same. So my coaching business was born. And that's what I do day in, day out now. So I specifically help business owners of engineering consultancies grow to 5 million, from 5 million to 10 million and 10 million and beyond. I love what I get to do every single day. So team, what I want to talk to you about today is a super interesting topic, how to get more for your business. And so I'm helping a client at the moment sell his business and it's a very interesting topic. So I'm helping one client sell his business at the moment. I'm working with another business of four directors. Like they want to work for the next 10 or 15 years, but a really, I guess, pivotal conversation that we're having is around, you know, how much each of the directors want to get for the sale of their business. Like what's important to them in terms of, okay, well, if it's this number based on a four times multiple as an example, will each of the directors get X, Y, and Z? And so that's a really interesting conversation that we're having at the moment around, and like that's a conversation for another day, but that's such an important, such an important thing that you need to think about and know and kind of get clear on is like, you know, how much do you, if you are looking to sell your business, how much do you want to get for it? And, you know, it's often surprising where, people get to the end of their their kind of working journey or, you know, an opportunity comes along to sell their business. And they're like, I didn't get what I wanted for. I thought my business would be worth so much more. And it's because people haven't planned for it. They aren't aware of the sort of the factors and the levers that you need to pull and to implement in your business to get more for the sale of it. And so that's, I mean, that's what I want to cover today. My sort of learnings and experiences over the last two or three months in terms of helping my clients sell his business, working with a couple of experts in that space, but also this business that I'm talking about with four directors, you know, that's sparking some amazing conversations because a lot of them are like, oh, like I want, I want a lot more than that to retire in 10 years time. Or I want, I want a lot more than that in 10 years time because I want to go and do other things and invest in property and X, Y, and Z. And so that means that we're having conversations now that are informing decisions to help my clients now kind of set themselves up for for that level and you know it often means that so you know using this client as an example they want to get to 20 million in 10 years time but i think we're sort of midway through discussions of probably what's going to fall out of that is that we actually need to increase our revenue projections so that all the directors get what they want out of the business in terms of the sale value so yeah, I just wanted to kind of share that, that I'm, I'm going through that at the moment, which has kind of sparked this podcast episode because I feel like it's going to be super useful. And in general, like I think this podcast, as I move it forward, I want to just share the things that I'm learning. Like obviously I've learned a heap over my years being part, director and shareholder of that business going to 40 million, but you know, I'm learning so much working with my clients at the moment. I just want to share this sort of stuff on the podcast. So I guess there's like a number of kind of key factors. There's a number of things. Like if you're thinking about selling your business, if you're thinking about setting your business up to sell, there's a lot of things that you need to be thinking about now in terms of, you know, what potential buyers look at when considering the value of your business. And by no means is this going to be an exhaustive list. This is kind of the key points that I've pulled out of, you know, the discussions that we're having with valuers at the moment. And this kind of the experience that I'm having helping clients sell their business and setting their business up for sale. So like I said, by no means an exhaustive list, but hopefully this episode gives you a few kind of key things to think about in terms of setting your business up properly for sale and getting the maximum sale value you possibly can. So 
one of the, and I'll just kind of go through these in no particular order and kind of just talk about them a little bit. The first kind of thing that's really interesting is, is key person risk. And so valuers and, you know, the kind of the bigger fish looking at making an offer to, to sort of smaller businesses to, to buy them they they really do consider key person risk. And so if you're a single business owner, sole director with no leadership team in place, meaning no succession planning or anything like that, you are going to get far less for your business than if you have a couple of directors or you don't necessarily need to go out and put other directors on or a leadership team below you that if you were to get hit by a bus tomorrow, the business would continue to run because for potential purchasers, purchasers of your business, they look at that. They honestly go, if Sam or Judy or Michael got hit by a bus tomorrow, would this business keep running without them? And if the answer is no, the multiple and the, you know, the, the times by factor goes down so significantly. So if you can, Firstly, be aware of that, but then build into, like if you're setting your business up for sale, you need to really consider key person risk. If you're a sole director, you need to start thinking about bringing on your leadership team, starting to make sure that you've got, you know, if you've got four to five or 10 key client relationships, that your leadership team are across all of those key client relationships. If you've got and I often talk to my clients in my boardroom coaching program, which is a, a program purely for, for business owners, helping them to grow their consultancies. There's kind of five areas that you need to focus on in your business. Marketing, you've got sales, you've got operations and admin, you've got project delivery, as well as vision strategy and the growth of your business. And so, you know, if you can have key people and key roles who are in charge of, who look after each of those five roles in the business, then and they can run autonomously without you, then your the sale value of your business goes up exponentially because of this key person risk. And so that's a real thing to consider. So don't go out now and necessarily hire five five new sort of senior people or executive people, but you know really that's got to factor into your business planning. If you are thinking about selling and you want the maximum value for your business, then you've got to think about key person risk and starting to mitigate that. So like I said, that's a leadership team below you who are running projects, looking after client relationships. And then you've got the other sort of admin and operational support in your business too. So full-time office manager, you've got someone looking after marketing and sales, or maybe the leadership team are empowered with marketing and sales and winning and delivering their own work for their own kind of business unit or team. Um, and, you know, potentially you're, you're only focused on the strategy, vision and direction of your business. So key person risk, and building a leadership team around you. Yeah, I think that's what I want to say on that. The other thing is past performance. So when I first became a director of the first, so I started in a, a bigger corporate in my in my career, and then I moved to a smaller, uh, a, a small business. We're about 20 staff. I think we're doing about 3 million a year. And I got the opportunity to be a director and shareholder of that business at that point. And then obviously, per my story before, we sort of merged, I think, eight or nine different businesses together. And then over the, so that sort of ensuing nine years, we grew up to about 40 million, which is when I exited. But when we, when we were going through our first merger, so our growth strategy was really to merge, do 50-50 merge with like-minded and similar businesses in terms of similar service offerings which meant we could get more work from the same clients and that kind of thing and share client relationships and then obviously grow. When we were looking at merging with that first business, we had had two past years of really, really good performance, but the third year is in the farthest out year was actually not that great. And so the advice that we received was, you know, that third year of, of much lower performance, lower revenue, lower profit is actually really impacting the valuation of your business. And so we actually decided to delay the merge 
I think about about nine months or or eight months or something like that. So that that last year actually dropped off our valuation because we were going really well at that point. So we allowed that sort of past or that last year to drop off the valuation process because the valuation process we were using was three times. So the, the, the multiple, the average of the last three years of performance. So we actually allowed that, that year to drop off. And it meant that then when we got to the merge process or to the valuation process, we had three years of really, really good trading. And, you know, we got a lot more for our business at that point. So past performance is a really important indicator. And it's definitely something that buyers and valuers will consider. So that's something you definitely need to consider. If you're going through or you're thinking about going into a merged environment or a buyout scenario, you have to look at past performance and whether you may want to delay things to allow a year of poor trading to actually drop off the back. So yeah, like I said, valuers and potential buyers really look at past performance. It's usually a three-year past performance, but everyone's kind of different. I have seen five years, but it's typically sort of the past three years of performance. So, and again, like, if your strategy is to sell, but you're going really, really well and your growth projections are to keep going up by 10 or 20 or 30% year on year, you may actually want to delay the sale of your business for a period of time because if your growth projections are going up, it just means that obviously your business valuation is going to go up too. So if you delay the, the sale by three years or five years or, or whatever, it just means that you're going to get more for your business. So that's past performance. They then look at future maintainable earnings in terms of, all right, well, this business has done X over the last 10 years. What's its earning potential into the future? And so that's when they look at, in particular, work signed up. So a lot of my clients at the moment have 12 months worth of work on their books at the moment. So they're kind of cool in that space. But a lot of valuers and, and buyers will look at, all right, well, who are your key clients? And so who are your top key clients? How much have they spent with you over the past three years to sort of show a good track record? But more importantly, what are they projected to continue to spend with you over the next three to five years? Because business, businesses don't want to buy a business where the key clients are going to leave and you know the, the, the earning potential of that business is going to drop off a cliff. So they're looking at the future maintainable earnings. How, can, how, how well can this business maintain its current kind of earning capacity. So they look at key clients, they look at work signed up, they look at contracts, that sort of stuff. So if you're if you're the person or a business owner that's not great at, at getting clients to sign fee proposals and contracts, please start doing that because valuers will look at that too in terms of signing contracts and signed agreements. But they really do look at future maintainable earnings and how can you as a business owner or, or your business keep doing what it's going to do over the years to come. And that kind of falls into key person risk too. So if you were to drop off a cliff or get hit by a bus, could your business keep performing? And are those key client relationships spread amongst your leadership team? So, you know, your clients wouldn't go elsewhere if you moved on or, you know, bad things happened. So past performance and then future maintainable earnings or future spend in your business from your key clients. Interestingly too, I hadn't actually written this note down, but as I'm thinking about it, the clients that you, the caliber of clients that you have on your books really matters as well. So if you've got a whole bunch of C and D grade clients that are kind of spending, you know, kind of, you know, not much or, or, or change with you each month, then you're not going to get as much for your business as opposed to if you have A grade five, three to A grade clients on your books who love you, who've been spending money with you for the past five years, who will continue to spend money with you, businesses will pay a premium for just those clients. I was talking to someone the other day and I can't remember the actual multiple they got, but they were sort of a small business. I think they were doing three million a year in revenue but they had an A-grade client on their books and that client had been with them forever and was just in love with them. And they basically got all of this A-grade, so sort of top, top land developer in Australia. And the company that bought his business paid 
an absolute, like I don't know the actual figures. I was going to say an eight times multiple, but I don't think that's correct. Anyway, it paid an absolute premium just to secure that one key client. So just because he had secured an A, an a grade top tier land developer in Australia and he had been working with them. So, so had shown past, past earnings and signed up work, that purchaser paid an absolute premium to, to get that key client across into their books. So that's sort of something to consider too, in terms of, I mean, I talk to my clients about this all the time, chase A grade clients, work with A grade clients, let go of C and D grade clients, but that's just sort of another reason to do that because it means the valuation of your business just goes through the roof. And kind of finally, revenue and profit. So look, they're kind of the, they're kind of the, the givens in terms of like they look at your, your, your revenue levels, the higher your revenue, the more your multiple, the higher your profit, the more your multiple. So you want to be obviously making sure that your revenue is increasing. They, want, they like to see an upward trend on revenue and a good sort of track record of good, healthy profit margins up to sort of that 30 to 40% net profit. So, you know, they're all the things that potential buyers will consider. And if you're not doing well in some of those areas, they will certainly let you know and the valuation of your business will go down. But, you know, hopefully what today's podcast episode has given you is a nice kind of summary of the key things that you need to focus on and look for. If you're thinking about selling, if you're thinking about going into the emerged environment, if that's part of your plan in the next 10 years, that's awesome because these are the things that you can start to work on now to implement so that you can get as much as you possibly can for your business. I think that's it. I've exhausted my list. Team, I love this sort of stuff. I love helping my clients with strategy and helping them build their businesses. If you would like some help building your business too, please don't hesitate to reach out. Let's have a chat about how I could help you grow your business. But that's it for me today. Have an amazing day.